Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so excited to be here with everybody. This is your Wednesday Team Prosperity meeting, and today is October 16th. I'm really excited to speak today. Um, I've got something that I wanted to go over. Mike's got a great presentation for us, so I'll just go ahead and get right into it. Um, I appreciate everybody being here, and I appreciate the time that people are taking to look at the recording as well. Um, and what I wanted to talk about today was my intro call. And I've been having a lot of success with this, so I just wanted to share what I've been doing. And um, it's helped me, so I, ho I hope it helps you. Um, and I do a lot of this on LinkedIn. So whether I'm connecting with somebody, wishing them a happy anniversary, or congratulations on a new job, hi, thanks for the connection, I, I look forward to getting to know you, or the computer will generate, you know, the happy anniversary or congrats on the new job. Um, because you don't know if they're still at that place or maybe they picked up the new position but they don't like it. Um, they could always become a client too or do a referral. So you're just not really sure. Um, but what I pop in behind one of those is if you have any questions for me or if I can help you in any way or if you want to set up a quick intro call, please let me know. Thanks and have a great day. So just something super easy. I just take that, you know, note if you have any questions for me or if I can help you in any way or if you want to set up a quick intro call, please let me know. And it almost, it's almost too easy because instead of me, like, sending information and then following up forever on it, I'm just not very good at that. So I found a way to pre-interview these people on the front end before I even put them in the CRM with notes. So I'm sorting them when I talk to them on the intro call, whether or not they could be a possible recruit or possible client or a dump uh, before they go into my CRM. Or, you know, obviously a referral source as well, so I forgot to put that in there. But um, the intro call lets me build rapport on the front end. Um, and that way I really only need to follow up with people a max of one or two or three more times to fully resolve that lead instead of having it in my CRM for months and not having a resolution. So I say one sentence, it's one long drawn out sentence, and then I just take notes. And here's my long drawn out sentence. And nobody would ever think this is a script because it's not really written well or anything. I just say, hi, this is a lot of emails from LinkedIn. I'm trying to get better at getting to know my LinkedIn contacts and seeing what people do and seeing if I can provide any value. So tell me a little bit about yourself. And nobody ever complains. They just love to talk about themselves, right? And what I'm doing, and this is my last slide, I promise. It's a little busy, and I'll fix that on the bottom. But I let them talk. I take notes, and I just ask a few follow-up questions. I show interest in them and what they're saying. And it's hard for me to be quiet sometimes, but that's what it takes to get to know, you know, what people are about. So... They're talking, I'll ask them, hey, how long have you been doing that? Well, what do you love or what do you not love about it? You know, if you don't want to say that, you could say, what do you like? What do you not like about it? That suits you better. I'm going to make a little chart, like love, not love, and then I circle the things that are relevant to what we do. I take notes. I try to figure out where, like, the value and the synergy is going to be and where they're going to fit into what we're doing. And then I ask them, you know, do you look for additional streams of, or sources of income or revenue or expanding your business or really whatever they told me their pain point is or whatever they do? This more has to do with me actually listening, you know, um, and that's when they usually kind of open up their eyes and say, wait, what do you do? Because now I'm starting to get a little bit more personal, right? So I pretty much tell them we're spreading financial literacy. We teach people about how many works. We have a widely anticipated book release coming out soon, and we're going to reach over 100 million people or 100 million Americans in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, and we're really exploding right now. We're just in need of top talent to fill different types of roles and positions. We're also giving away a bunch of free services during the time. Would you like to look at some overview material? And honestly, everybody, I mean, I've had a few people that are like, no, I'm not open to anything else. Like, oh, I'm so glad for you that you're happy. You know, we're offering a bunch of free services. Would you like to speak with one of our top consultants for a few minutes and see if we can help you in any way? If they're like, no, I'm not open to that. Well, what's the point of, you know, following up? I'm not even going to put them in my CRM. But most people say, yeah, I want to know more. 
So what I do is I send them the link with the two short videos, like the playvideo.biz, and I tell them, hey, I'm going to text you a link with two short videos, and I'll follow up with you tomorrow about the same time. Is that okay? I don't even ask them, hey, when, what? I just say, hey, about this time tomorrow. It gives me a nice little range of time within a you know, half hour before, half hour after. And then I text them. I LinkedIn message them, you know, the playvideo.biz, the one that's got the Siebel video about the book, and then the one that has, like, the nine-minute company video. And then that's when I do my one follow-up call. Hey, did you watch it? Are you interested in more information? Do you want to interview for a position? If so, I send them what I call a choppy of 20-minute video, and that's the vfbtm.com. And I tell them, look, this video is a little bit choppy, but it'll give you a good overview of what we're doing, the different positions, the compensation. Um, and then I'd love to have another conversation. I'll follow up with you tomorrow, tomorrow about this time. And it's really resolved within those two follow-up calls. From that point, they've seen the 20-minute video. They've seen the f a They've seen the positions. At that point, I can either send them up for an ABC call, I can offer them an f a or I can dump them. You know, and that's pretty much what I've been doing. And I've got somebody coming in today. I've hopefully have somebody coming in tomorrow. I've got an f a scheduled for later this week. So it's working for me. I don't have enough data um, to say, yes, it's produced this much, you know, yet. But I just wanted to share with the team what I've been doing and what's been working for me. I know Mike wanted me to go over it, and I will keep you all posted on how this goes. Um, I've sent this to, you know, I'll happy to send it to whoever needs it. I'm sure you can make a better little intro blurb than this, um, but at least I wanted to share what I was doing. So that's pretty much what I have. I'm looking forward to bringing up Mike. Let me just uh, have just one second to grab him. Thank you. All right, you guys, thanks for being on today. We've got a little bit lower attendance than normal. It's about a third. So a lot of people, of course, they have jobs. We always talk about, you know, this particular time in the middle of the week not being the best time for a meeting. However, with all the other stuff the company does, we want to make sure that we did fit in um, our team meeting, and this was the most logical place right now. So I just want to take you guys through some stuff that will help you build your business, and then you guys can pass down to other people. We'll have this, obviously, on the YouTube channel, Facebook. We'll email it out. Um, things are about to get explosive here. And if, you're, you know, if your people, as they come in, are brand new, they're not going to understand how the rest of us view this that have been around for a while. We've seen this building up, and it's getting ready to get to a point where it's going to get explosive. We're going to have a viral business model, and you just need to get into – a mindset and a position to be able to absorb that growth, be a leader, and you're going to get richly, richly rewarded for that financially speaking, which opens up an incredible um, opportunity for you to have an exit point and explore other parts of your life. It doesn't happen overnight, and I see people getting frustrated 60, 90, 120 days in. It's too early of the cycle, guys, and, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos, you know, he was an early pioneer. So it took a long time for Amazon to get built, nine years to be profitable. Uh, it's not going to take you guys that long. You don't have to build all the infrastructure, test all of these things. You just have to come in and follow a system. What you have to provide is the activity, the accountability, a little bit of education from your side, and some grit and sweat equity to see this out. You have an unbelievable opportunity here. It's going to be one that you have to put a little time, effort, and then give your time or give your efforts that time to compound. Remember, we're combining an online business opportunity with one of the biggest problems in America right now, final, uh, financial literacy, to create a new way of doing business. Very important. You're combining a big problem and rich people, you know, in the Seabolt video, a uh, six and a half minute video, rich people get rich by solving problems. We are solving a problem here uh, with a digital model that allows you guys exponential reach and none of the fixed and variable costs that would go along with a traditional build-out. So, you know, understand what you have. Be confident about what you have in the marketplace. Just because somebody else from the other side doesn't believe it will work, doesn't understand it, um, that's, that's on their side, not on our side. If you start to let other people from the outside market influence how you think about this opportunity, then you take the power away from you and you give it to them. 
Most people that you speak with, it's not going to be a suitable fit. 126, it's got to be earned. So when you talk about contract rates, we do have an amazing contract for an agency building model for a leveraged income opportunity. If people are looking for a linear income opportunity, just going out there, selling insurance on their own, um, being a producer, this is not the opportunity for them. If they're looking to build a cash flow asset, spends off a lot of passive income, and build nationwide portfolio of digital agencies, this is the right opportunity for them. Know your numbers, guys, no matter what you're doing. If you know your numbers, then you're able to know what's working, what's not working, you know, tie up the stuff that's not working, end it, and, you know, put a little fuel on the fire for the stuff that is working. That goes from every part of your business, marketing, managing, consulting, every part of your business. If you know your numbers, you're going to be in a way better position to build it effectively, know how to build it bigger, and then pass that knowledge on to the people that come in underneath your member. As a leader, you have to be able to create an experience for your downline that's better than you had coming in. And if we can get that in a constant cycle of getting better and better and better for the generations that come under us, um, this is going to be a very, very explosive opportunity like we led with in the very beginning, and we're right around the corner for that type of growth. Football tournament's going on. Right now, Heather is uh, she's got a pretty substantial lead, but it's early. Um, a, you want to get on the scoreboard. You want to be competitive in everything that you do in life, even if it's just a fun little tournament like this. Be competitive. It helps spur you to more activity, which is going to get you more results, which is going to get you more income, more growth. So everything that we try to do is to try to make you guys um, have a little fun doing this, take the monotony and the grind out of this, but also competition from within spurs more growth. This is the final week of the 12-week year, and for you guys that are finishing the 12-week year, um, congratulations. It's, um, it's a system that you're not going to learn the first time around. What we tell people is the first time that you do this, just make it through. Good, bad, or ugly, just power through and learn. As you go through the second, the third time, you extract more out of the system, um, and when you extract more, you get more value out of it, and eventually, just like we say, always know your numbers, by having a time management system with an effective business system like we have, um, you're going to be you know, tough to beat in the marketplace and in the industry. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to crush the competition from within and build up this business, virtual financial, to the point we have enough market share, and that money will follow that market share that's on the move. Remember, we're just looking for people to see it out the first time through. Uh, we're not looking for per uh, perfection. If you stay with it, you know, you'll have benefit. Next time you'll be in a better position, like we said, to extract more value out of this. If you guys are looking at joining us, this is the last week of probably a two-week break, and we'll start another 12-week year. Um, you need to read the book, uh, get through the book, and make sure that you understand uh, coming in that the book needs to be read. You'll fill out some worksheets. You've got a bunch of people around you that have been doing this system for a while that can help you. Uh, if you do not have an Audible account, I can get you a link for the free book. Uh, if you have any questions about this, let us know as we get a little bit closer to the end of this year and the beginning of the next year. We'll have some more information about this. Uh, we've got some, it says exciting changes. I don't know how exciting that you guys will find this, but we're going to change the activity sheets a little bit and incorporate a little bit more of what everybody's doing so we have a more, uh, not a, a better idea of what's going on, and you guys can track even more things. So that will be released in the next week or so. Pretty excited about that. Um, the more that we explore, the more marketing legs we open up, the more conversations that we have, uh, the easier it is to find people like-minded, come in, that share our vision, have a motivation for getting this done, and have a back professional history that will support that type of uh, track record of success. The Facebook group, guys, get to know each other. You can ask, answer questions with each other, share relevant material, push each other towards common goals, recognize the ones that are making it happen. This is our group. It's closed. The only people that are in this group are our partners. So feel free to use it for however you want. Uh, if you are having things that are working, not working, you want to share that, you want to get feedback, that's what this group is for. Feel free to use it for your uh, advantage. We've been talking about the How Money, Work, How Money Works book, and I said over time, if we do this once a week, eventually we'll have a complete 
um, session ready to be recorded all about the book. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how much on average Americans are losing per year just because they don't properly understand basic household financial issues. 1230 was the average, almost 20% lost 2,500. Lack of financial literacy cost almost 300 billion last year. So we took both those numbers. We took 1230 and we took 2,500 over a 20 year period of time, just by making better financial choices, understanding finances a little bit better um, over a 20 year period, that's an extra at 6% compounding interest rate, an extra 50 or 100 grand they could have at that period of time. So small changes end up can be, you know, significant sums of money over periods of time. And then last week we talked about the four threats every wealth builder must conquer. That's procrastination, inflation, losses, and taxes. So now that the client is aware of these threats, it's time to sit down with somebody, review strategies, vehicles, concepts that will help them conquer them. So you're leading people um, into a point where they want more information. You're manufacturing, you're creating interest, and then you're getting these people uh, into uh, speak to a consultant that can help them on a wide range of different things they want to see. So this week, we want to add one thing to it, and that's the monthly spending habits by the typical American. In the book, it lists, you know, takeout, eating out, ride shares, events, lottery tickets, coffee, lattes, alcohol, new clothes, subscription services. Total average $7.57 a month, and if you take 50% of that, average American could save $3.78 a month, cutting non-necessities in half. So we talk about, you know, well, what will that money do over a period of time? It'll do a lot more than what they're spending on it now. So when people say they're broke, they don't have money, it always goes back to the point A that we start with, you just don't understand how money works, let us help you. So this is the average American right here with money just flowing out of the wallet, really unknown where it's going, why it's going there, or how to stop it. We just want to flip the mindset. We want our clients to guard their money. We want them to be, um, you know, in a position and a point of frame, a reference of mind to understand how their money is either working for them or how their money is working against them. If it's working against them, make those simple changes. Just change the way you view money, keep the hard earned money and put it to work for you. So this is on the front end. All we're trying to do is change a mindset that people have instead of saying, you know, I can't, I don't, it all starts with that mindset. Once you learn how money works, you can make those changes in your life and start to put the money work to work for you instead of against you. And that's really all of our lately, that's all of our message to the open marketplace. Hey, we're ranked 16th in the world of financial literacy. American families are paying the price. You know, you guys have heard this. We're launching the nationwide financial literacy campaign, the book release, the media tour. We're really passionate on the client side about helping them learn how money works. And then from the business opportunity, when you get in front of this many people with such a positive message, there's going to be a huge growth uh, curve that we're going to be able to take advantage of. We talked last week about the how money works message, how we can take that message and we can use it to create partner, uh, partner conversations. We can use it to create client conversations. And we stop there, but I want to add one thing this week, and that is the bridge. So when you're talking to somebody, like Alana says, if they don't fit into the partner or the client, um, you know, box here at what we do, then that message, how money works, if somebody's looking for a business opportunity, if they need help with finances, they want to learn how money works, that message is much easier for the other side to take and pass on um, as a bridge or referral or as a networking opportunity for you. So always remember this message, three different outcomes that you can extract value from. And on the tier four and the tier six, guys, remember the tier four is the intro to the CRM. Tier six is that launch of your business. These appointments right here should lead into that CRM is built and that business is launched, 20 names in there. And I, I'm telling you guys that if somebody comes in, if Joe Smith comes in and Joe Smith puts 20 names in the CRM of people he has some type of relationship or affiliation with, and he cannot go out and start using that how money works message uh, to go in and reach these people and talk to them, he stands probably about a 0% chance of making this business. If you can't take that positive message 
and talk to people that you already have some type of relationship with. It's just not going to cut it in this business. Um, this is the most positive message that we have. It's the most well-receptive message that we've had in the marketplace. You know, just continue to pound it home. You're going to find people that raise their hand and say, yeah, I want to talk to you further about the business, about what you guys do for the client, et cetera. On the warm market, don't forget, Facebook Messenger. So if you have people coming in and they're looking for ways to reach out to people in their warm market, you know, Facebook Messenger is a great way. So we've got all these tools, all these platforms, all these ways we can communicate with people. Um, make sure people are using it to their advantage. You can't just sit back in this environment and say, I'm having a tough time creating leads because you've got an ample opportunity out there to open so many conversations. This is the golden age of the entrepreneur for people like us building a business like this to be able to go out and reach so many people. A lot of went over the intro calls, but basically all you want to do in a very positive way is show interest by letting them talk about themselves, but direct the conversation. Are they happy, not happy? What's going on? Do they have goals? Um, are they open to, you know, taking a look at, you know, what we're doing? Do they need help from the consulting side or from the client side? Um, it just opens the door and it leads into a directed narrative that you can actually, you know, funnel this conversation into an endpoint. And that's what Alana has been very good at because now she doesn't have to go through the process of sending some upfront information, trying to follow up, never getting back in front of them. You're trying to waste as little time as possible. And if you can get to a, an endpoint in an intro call, that's a great amount of um, work that you don't have to go through on the follow up. And it allows you to get the outcomes a lot sooner, which you're going to build your business faster. Remember, on the client side, if you offer a free financial needs analysis, some people, you know, will be receptive to that. Some people find that, you know, in, a, in the connotation as a way that, oh, they're going to try to sell me something. If it is suitable, if we can make a positive impact on your finances, we are going to try to recommend and sell you something. But that's not the point of the upfront F&A. It's to teach and educate. So another way we talked about this last week, you can break it down. Would you like to know about ways to improve your cash flow? Get out of debt faster. Um, you know, uh, have you ever talked to somebody about how close, how far you are away to retirement, how to potentially retire tax-free? So all of these, like, you know, just quick jabs or fewer questions, uh, you know, manufactures interest in what we're doing. So you can use the full F&A, or you can break it down and look at each one of these boxes and offer, you know, ways, like I said, to improve cash flow, get out of debt faster, uh, see where you are in retirement. So never forget, you have the full F&A. You also have the building blocks inside you can segment and use to talk about as well. We want to know from our partners, from our potential clients, what's your game plan? At the end of the day, that's all we want to care about. You know, where are you now? Where do you want to go? How are you going to get there? What's your game plan? Well, you know, for us, the business opportunity, you know, getting wealthy, building this cash flow asset, getting rich is not a fantasy. Most people think it is a fantasy. So when you incorporate that, and that's a fixed mindset. So when you're talking to people, you want them to have a growth mindset, but you also want to make sure that you realize when you're talking to people on the client side, everybody's in bad shape. You know, 76, three out of every four people live paycheck to pay, paycheck. Over or right at half have no money for retirement. Almost half do not have four hours for an emergency. People don't know how to make money. They don't know how to keep it and almost none of them know how to multiply it. So you've got a lot of advantages on the business and the client side. You want to be confident in your ability to go out there and help people and realize that even if the person out there says they're doing okay, they're probably not. So learn that language and verbiage that will manufacture interest in what you're doing. Uh, you know, and this is just something that's happened in our country over the last you know, number of decades is we've got people brought up in poor and middle-class families they inherit those beliefs and they pass that down. So you have generations of people that are suffering from not knowing how money works because money is one of those taboo subjects that's not talked about in the family. If your family members don't know how the money works, haven't taught you how money works, the school system doesn't do it. So all we're trying to do is we're trying to break that. We're trying to break that mindset and have people take a new path with confidence to make better decisions that will immediately improve their life now and in the future as well. Also, you need to understand 
the tax environment in the future is going to be dramatically higher. There's no way that it can't be. We talk about the net interest on the debt, where that's going to be, how much that's going to cost us. You have the U.S. debt clock right here. I mean, when you look at that debt clock, it can make you dizzy. That money has to come from somewhere. It's going to come from the tax system, whether they, um, you know, eliminate tax deductions, raise tax brackets, whatever it might be. It's a shakedown of the American taxpayer. When you have vehicle strategies that can shield people from that environment and give them tax-free income, um, most people don't understand the tax system now. They don't understand the implications of a future tax rate environment that's going to be dramatically higher. Your job is to educate them and make sure they realize, um, you know, would you like to keep more money in your pocket or would you like to give more money to Uncle Sam? It's your choice, A or B, what do you want? And also on the living benefits side, remember, not many people know, know about living benefits. So the more you educate people about living benefits, the more they understand what a cost-effective way it is to get an all-inclusive coverage policy with a fraction of the money it would cost to build that basket of supplementary products, uh, you're in the driver's seat. And so if I was making a billboard about living benefits, this would be it because it compares getting supplements versus the LB, and you can see – doesn't matter, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of age, there's dramatic savings here. And then if they were to take that savings, invest in something like an IUL over that 20-year term, that's this number and uh, some type of a fixed account, that's that number. So we're not only saving people money, we're teaching them how to use that savings for asset accumulation. You're a pet company. So always remember that. So when somebody wants to do business an old way, if they say, well, the only way that I will ever do business is face-to-face, -face, not a good partner for you. Their business model is a dead business model walking. Uh, we're going to put it to rest here within the next probably seven to ten years. However, can't change somebody. It's not your job to rebuttal, convince, explain. It's your job to invite people to take a look at what we're doing. What we're doing. The right people will see this and want to talk to you. The wrong people, we create filters so they don't waste too much of your time. Uh, one of the things that, you know, you guys are looking for, some of you, is a way to get some data. And so Zillion Resumes right here, they do have a, a pretty cool system. I don't know the quality of the resume, but it's cost effective, and you do have options where you can uh, download data, which is pretty nice on Excel spreadsheets and CVS forms. Uh, so that's at the end of this, we'll go through and I'll show you guys that real quick. And also, I have partners coming in or you guys have partners coming in that have relatively new or brand new linked account, LinkedIn accounts, and they're getting restricted pretty quickly in terms of the amount of people they can search for, invite. One of the ways around that is this, recruiting.net. It's, um, it's a site that I'll show you at the end as well. It will help you during those times when you're being restrictive not be totally cut off from being able to search. LinkedIn Helper, if you're using this, make sure that you stay consistent with it because it's going to reward consistency. If you're not using it, not a problem. It's a personal choice. LinkedIn does not like it. Um, but if you are using it, remember, you're building that profiler list. You're sending a personal invite, some type of loose connection with the other side, thank you message, a value or two value-based messages, and you can go into business, product, personal branding messages. So it allows you to be very structured and efficient in your communication in LinkedIn because as you're going through this, once you get through that cycle of communication, you've got that folder or that file that's always there. So like uh, any type of an email list, you can go back 30, 60 days later and hit that file again with a brand new message. So once again, this is a personal choice if you want to use it. If you do use it or want to use it, and have questions about it, we've got tutorials in the YouTube channel, and then we can also answer any questions you might have. Essentially, you're doing three things. You're collecting, selecting, inviting. You're uh, thanking them. And then you've got this over here, messages to first connections, where you create cycles of communication that go to specific types of people. And remember, as you're going through that, we've even got ways in the very middle right here, before you get to your brand, business, and products, where if you're doing the value-based messages, you can use a service like Snipply and put a banner on there to try to create some lead generation, send them to a landing page. Once again, if you guys have any questions about this, just let us know. Uh, the landing pages. So 
some of you guys are starting to kind of look at maybe creating your own landing pages or doing some things, I will tell you, along with the intro calls and everything else that we try to give you guys, one of the ways that you will create interest in yourself, what you're doing, open up conversations, is to be able to give people something they're actually looking for. So as an entrepreneur in this business, think about what you struggle with the most, like lead generation and things like that. And then if you've got you know, reports out there that you're collecting, uh, you can always recycle those. Now, you can't take somebody else's report and send it out, but you can rewrite it to make it your own. And, you know, then you're leading with, hey, do you want to know how to create leads on Facebook? Take a look at this. And then when you follow back up with them, you say, hey, did you get that, um, that information about creating leads on Facebook? What did you think? Those are the type of people that you can also attract into because if people are entrepreneurs, people are having the same type of issues that you are, they're going to be interested in what you have to offer them free, no cost, no obligation, and also creates interest and allows you to open up conversations. Also, email uh, and are the emojis in the email subject lines. I know it seems simple, but it dramatically increases the attention and the open rate on the emails that go out there. So the small things that we can do, it increases open rates by 10, 20 plus percent. Um, that's something along with everything else we try to incorporate, the better that you can do at becoming more efficient and having more people get their eyes on your assets, your emails, your articles, whatever it might be, uh, the better. And don't forget, no matter what you're doing, client, partner, it's always about the cost of acquisition. Acquisition grows your business. It's the only metric you should care about regardless of the cost of X. Remember, if a lead is a dollar, a hundred dollars, or if you're having marketing assets, creating leads that cost you X amount, that's not what you should really be concentrated on. If that lead vendor, that lead generation, that marketing asset, whatever you're doing, creates clients, creates partners, there's going to be a cost of that acquisition. The acquisition cost makes sense. Repeat what you're doing. If it doesn't, kill what you're doing, but it's going to allow you to know and not get emotional about things. When you have data in front of you, very easy to say. It takes all the guesswork out of it. This is working. This is not working. And remember, we've got a turnkey business system. It's plug and play. It's predictable. It's profitable. Um, the people part of it, we have the product. We have the process. It's the people part that we have to make sure that we generate, that we bring in, we train support to the point they can go out and be the leader, be the manager, be the business development coordinator that we need them to be. You've got, you know, an established market, insurance, old, stable, stale industry. You've got, you know, our disruption that's creating changes, opportunity, transformation, which in turn creates a distribution opportunity that's virtual in a very large industry with all the infrastructure that you need to build a nationwide business. And then we got lucky. We've got a product and service that's much needed. We've got product innovation going on inside the marketplace right now. We've got e-apps, and we've got that needed advice and education. So when you look at the area of disruption and this size of an industry and the ability for us to create new value and new wealth creation from that innovation, it's an amazing opportunity because this industry is measured in trillions. There is no better time right now in history to be a marketer, networker, entrepreneur, the tools available, the reach that you have. It's all amazing. People will look back on this period of time and realize what a time it was to be an entrepreneur. Take advantage, guys. Remember, your brand. Virtual financials on the back end. Yes, we've got a great business model for the right type of people, but on the front end, people are going to buy into you, your brand. Have a focus. Be genuine. Tell your story. Be authentic. Be consistent, be ready to you know, experiment, be willing to fail, create a positive impact in the marketplace, follow other successful examples that are doing it, uh, live your brand, let other people help tell your story. You know, user-generated content about you is, is awesome in the marketplace. And more than anything, have fun with this. If you go into this going in for a Facebook Live first time around and you have nobody come on and you get all frustrated, remember, Grant Cardone says you can't go to 1,000 without one. can't go to one without zero. So when you start all of these things, it's going to be a slow, methodical buildup. But the more you do, the more consistency that you have, the more brand awareness you create uh, as you go forward, it's going to build on top of each other. So remember, have fun, experiment, 
Don't worry about failing and don't worry about uh, the results in the very, very, very beginning. One of the things that we need to make sure for our partners, I think this is a problem. If your partner sits down in the morning with a cup of coffee and thinks, what do I do today? The big problem for their business. So we want to map out a strategy, a plan of action that gets them busy, fills up that calendar. Remember, in the very beginning, they're not going to have tier appointments as a manager, as a consultant, really. So you want to help them fill up their calendar with activities that they know that they can do so that when they go to their calendar, it's not all white. The worst thing that somebody can see is a total white calendar because then fear um, starts to creep in. They start to fail, feel, like, or feel like they uh, really can't do this and it's not for them. It's not materializing. So you want to paint that calendar uh, in the beginning with activities that that person or partner has control of. Get them have an activity. Get them into a rhythm activity. And always, always, guys, as a manager, as you start to see those early notes come from a new partner in the CRM, sometimes all you need to do is reply back, great job. Um, if somebody didn't answer, they weren't there for the follow-up, just let them know, this is typical. This is what happens. All of us go through this. The typical initial building stages of this business can be very slow. Uh, you will hit that point where you hit the inflection point, and you've got partners in your office, man hours. Um, you know, they're open and own their own markets. But in the beginning, it kind of feels like you're on a desert island. The more you can do as a manager, the positive reaffirmation and just being there kind of like a little sounding board to let people know what you're going through, I went through, they went through, we're going to get it through together. Remember, as you're going through, it's very important that you engage with your audience. In the very beginning of your social media, um, you know, that's going to be something that happens over time. You can speed up the process by making sure that you're consistent and getting out, you know, information um, on your own content or responding back to heavily trafficked comment or content with comments that make sense. So you're going to like, like, comment, share, respond back. You're going to send introductory or follow-up messages. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Get involved, like I said, in heavily trafficked posts. Stay away from religion. Stay away from politics. That stuff typically will divide the audience. Think outside the box. We talk about surveys, and we talk about different ways. The intro calls that we have, you can send out surveys, marketing. We're going into the year-end 2020, the 2020 surveys. What's people looking to do? Uh, are they looking to have a breakout year? What are some of their goals? Anything that you can do to continue the conversation, manufacture interest, and, and get people to the point where they're talking to you, um, you know, that's going to create what you're looking for. And we talked about this. There's two ways to attack content. You've got to produce it or you've got to engage with it. And this is uh, Gary V's $1.80 strategy. It's going to be very hard for a lot of us in the beginning. If you put your two cents in, this is 90 engagements per day. Uh, that's going to be a lot. So what you want to start with, maybe you start with a, you know, a 40 cent strategy and you have 20 engagements on LinkedIn per day. All we're trying to do is make sure that you, A, realize it's important, B, have the activity, but C, not be overwhelmed by such a large goal that you just, you know, you dread getting on and trying to fulfill that goal. We concentrate on LinkedIn because LinkedIn across the board is the most effective channel for businesses to get clients. In our, our case, you know, our business to identify and talk top talent we can potentially bring into our organization. You've got to have a communication strategy. You've got to follow something. If you're just randomly having, um, you know, indirect conversations out there, not really knowing where it is, how to follow up, where they are in the follow-up schedule, um, it becomes a mess to manage in your CRM. If you have a strategy, it's easy to just go in and say, last time I did this, according to my schedule, I do this today. It starts with your website, and really that is going to be your forward slash digital. That used to be forward slash biz, but it's forward slash digital. That's got a great deal of information there. And then around your website, you've got your online strategy, your social media strategy, your communication strategy. But you always want to have a center point, and that's your main site right here. From this, they can get a lot of information. They can access um, a lot of different areas in here to learn about the business. Uh, and then around this website, like I said, you want landing pages, you want marketing assets, you want social media, all kind of revolving around this. You also have to make sure for you and your partners, the CRM is the brains of your operation. So the new leads that come in, contact them. 
A new lead, if they're coming off a landing page, statistically speaking, the quicker you get to them, easier it is to resolve that lead. If somebody comes off a landing page and you get a lead alert and you get to them 48 hours later, they're not going to know who you are, who Virtual Financial is, anything about what they've seen, and now you're right back over at point A. So you want to kind of envision your leads as an ice cream cone on a hot summer day. Got to get to it quickly. Don't let it melt away because that knowledge, that little bit of knowledge they retain going through is going to be gone. Uh, follow up with the existing leads. Your job is to create and resolve leads. That's it. Not rebuttal, convince, explain, create, resolve leads. Manage your calendar. Look at your task. And then, you know, respond back, depending on where you are in the assembly line, to the appropriate notes uh, that are coming through as a consultant, as a manager, whatever it is. And like I said, as a manager, especially in that learning curve period, sometimes all you got to do is just respond back. Hey, great job. I see that you're working. Keep going. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. If you have questions that come up, we're here to help you. Keep educating yourself. That's going to be the key. Keep learning social media, recruiting, marketing, keeping up with the industry, macroeconomic events, uh, self-improvement, management, closing sales if you're into the consulting, and then more about virtual financial. Continue to educate yourself. Keep educating yourself on all aspects of the business. The more you learn, the more you earn. Write down your goals. I think one of the biggest issues we have with people coming into the 12-week year or this business in general is our vision isn't enough to make us jump up out of the bed. Your vision needs to be something not only you can see down the future, but you can feel with emotion. And that starts with really what do you want to get out of life, writing it down, reviewing it, and you know, making it happen. You're going to do the day-to-day -day activity. You're going to get motivated to do what you need to do on a daily basis by knowing what that's going to get you at the end point. Keep track of what you do. You know, Keep track of everything you do, what's working, what's not working. If you're doing something right now and it's not working, you need to evaluate why it's not working, and that comes from data points. Everything you do, no matter if you're listening to me or any type of system out there, it's always about tracking data points, and from that point, getting those point values up to a certain point where now this is working, now I can repeat it on a larger scale. Forces in the follow-up, we always talk about this, whether it's uh, hiring, whether it's uh, client sales, whatever it might be, uh, be personal, be relevant, entice the other side, give them calls to action. We always talk about follow-up's going to separate the high earners from the low earners, the big builders from the smaller builders. If you are great at creating leads and you're not great at following up, uh, if you can become great at following up, the combination of lead generation and follow-up skills it's going to get you what you're looking for. Remember, the evolution of the business partner, eventually they're not going to need you at all. In the beginning, they're going to need you for everything. So if you're the type of person that gets frustrated by questions, um, that's going to be a problem in this business because you've got to basically handhold somebody to the point they can do some of the stuff. Then you're going to coach and mentor them. And eventually, like I said, they're not going to need you. But in those beginning stages, uh, they're going to have a lot of questions. If you avoid people, don't feel like talking to them, they're going to lose confidence in your ability to help them get where they want to go, drift, and quit. So always remember that upfront work. It may feel like, oh, more questions, more questions from this person. That's a good thing. You want to have questions coming in the beginning. If you get nothing, that's a big problem. That means that there's nothing going on from the other side. The Tier 1 ABC is the uh, focal point for your business. What is it? Why does it matter? What's it, why is it important? It's because it's an opportunity. It's really one of the last filters we have to make sure that the person that you're trying to hire makes a good fit. They're understanding the expectations we have for them coming in. They understand the expectations of what they can expect from our side as far as tools, training, support. Uh, if you can get up to 20 ABC calls a month, uh, your business will be really moving. An ABC call means they've been introduced to the overview material, including the company material, We've confirmed that, and they want to sit for what we call the Tier 1 ABC, or what we tell them, it's an interview process. So if you can get up to 20 of these a month, that's a metric that will really get your business going. And success in this business comes from leverage and learning how to use it. You have leverage in the leadership that we have, the clients, partners, professionals, products, providers, te uh, technology, social media, and tools. This is a leveraged business opportunity, both on the income side and everything else that we incorporate into the recipe 
of virtual financial. You've got a great deal of advantages here. You've got a great deal of leverage here. You've got a great deal of help here. And that's one of the biggest things that I think when Alana and I talk to people, especially if they're new to the industry, no one's helping them. If you can get over and convey to the other side the amount of training, support, um, development opportunities that we have, they're going to be surrounded by seasoned entrepreneurs that have been doing this for a while. Uh, that's going to be a selling point for a lot of people because they come in, they don't know what to do. Nobody's instructing them. Nobody's leading them. Nobody's supporting them. We will fill that gap and void. SVP. It's the first big metric of growth. Why do we want to get you there? Because it's the top contract. You're running an office. You've got ownership at that point. You're building distribution. You're open for the monthly, quarterly bonuses. You know, you're working on a six-figure income. You've got a huge asset that's going to produce a lot of cash flow. So that's why we have the tracks. That's why we push for the sprint. Uh, SVP cannot be taken from you. So once you obtain an SVP contract, we'll still work on, if you've got it in a relatively short period of time, we'll still work on building the office underneath and you helping you, but that's all you want to be concentrated on. How do I get to SVP in the quickest time possible? Because once I'm there, I've overcome the first real big obstacle, and now I can move on to the next you know, part of my business, which is running that office and having that office produce independent agencies out of it. We talk about this all the time. Where are they on the cash flow quadrant? And if they're happy there and they're on the left-hand side, we're going to leave them. There's a client opportunity conversation there, but on the partner opportunity, we're not messing with the employee or the self-employed if they're happy staying there. If they're not happy there and they want to make a move, we can help them. Or if they're already on the right-hand side as a business owner or an investor, um, this is a great opportunity. So once again, if someone already has a successful business, don't shy away from talking to them. Entrepreneurs know how to sniff out opportunity. A distribution model with a digital, digital overhaul in an industry this large is going to be attractive to a lot of people. The other thing that you have to make sure you understand when you're talking to people is the cash flow quadrant is one part of it, but there's a people quadrant as well. And when you look at the R, that's people who always have to be right. And they're not going to be humble enough to submit to a system. You're not going to be able to teach them anything. You cannot teach somebody anything if they already know everything. So if somebody's always right about something, um, that's a bad partner to bring in. If the C, if they're comfortable or if they have a need to be comfortable, um, this is not a good business opportunity. This is a very uncomfortable business opportunity in the beginning because, you know, of all the different things that we have to learn, incorporate, test, fail. Um, so if somebody needs to be comfortable, um, they're not going to find success. Most of the success in life comes outside your comfort zone. If somebody's not willing to go outside that comfort zone, they're not going to make a good partner here. Uh, the L, if somebody is a person that always needs to be liked, not going to make a good partner because you're ruffling thunders out there. You're, you're opening up a new way of doing business. For people that have been in this industry for a long period of time, it's a threat to the way they do business. They're not going to like you. On the other hand, you've got people that aren't going to understand what you're doing. And if that's the case, you know, and you always need to be liked on the front end of marketing, you're going to struggle. As a manager, you're going to struggle as well. Because sometimes with your partners, you got to tell them things that maybe they don't want to hear, but they need to hear. So you're not always going to be liked if your partner or a potential prospective partner falls in that category. They're going to struggle here. You want people in the W column, which is when. You want to talk to people regardless of if they had success in the past or not. They say, I'll do whatever it takes to be successful. I want to win. I see this. I understand your vision. I'm motivated to get it done. I can see it out. You know, uh, get put in the five years required. That's the people you want. If you bring in those type of people on a consistent basis, your business is going to be richly, richly rewarded for that. And the people that you bring in are all going to be a positive addition, which if you've got a whole group of positive people around you, uh, that's also going to greatly help you as well. Remember, the vision, the excitement, and the work ethic has to be all three. You can't just have the vision and not be excited about this because it's not enough to get you through the day-to-day -day grind. Um, so you need the vision, excitement, and work ethic. Somebody has the vision that we have, they're excited about what we're doing, and they have a work ethic to see it through, that's a good partner. Another thing is, the 
flow of this business on the assembly line, managers and consultants have to work. You guys have to be in tandem. You have to know what the other person is doing. Make sure everybody's using the CRM effectively. Uh, if you guys can get into a kind of a synchronized position or flow with the managers and the consultants together, uh, you will find that nothing falls through the crack. Business is flowing and everybody's happy. If somebody falls short on their job, communication, whatever it might be, it's going to anger the rest of the assembly line. Keeping everybody happy keeps everybody profitable. It's work, it's not hard work, but you do have to let your efforts compound over a period of time. Like I said, if you're coming in here 90 days in, you're frustrated, you've got to see that's in the timeline of events that we laid out in the interview, it's a very small sliver. And that sliver, we fully expect things to be tough. You're not going through anything else that we haven't been through. And, you know, if you're going to do a business like this where you've got no obstacles in terms of additional capital, additional infrastructure, Let's um, cancel out little goals because those invite excuses. Let's get big enough on our goals where the lies and excuses are no longer an option. 2020 is right around the corner. It's going to be a huge growth year. It's one of those symbolic years where people are probably looking to make changes in their life. We've got the book coming out. We are firing on all cylinders. The next 12 to 24 months should be an incredible ride. Do the things that you need to take advantage of what we have going on. And finally, having a bad day, bad week, bad month, uh, winning takes care of everything. So, you know, don't concentrate on the things that aren't going well, especially in the beginning, even if it's only small victories. Make sure you take time to, uh, you know, to recognize what's going on in your business that's working, that's positive, that's going in the right direction. Dwell on the negativity. It will weigh you down. You know, just center yourself around the positive things that are working, no matter how small they are, and you'll, you'll pull out of uh, the worst day, the worst week, or the worst month you possibly could have. So we do have a few more minutes, so I was going to make sure that we cut this off in time to go through this. So uh, Zillion Resumes, you know, I don't know the quality. I'm going to sign up for this and, and see what it is, but um, it's relatively affordable in terms of this is the pricing. And if you're running an office, you know, for monthly billing right here for $229, you can get 2,500 resumes. 500 for 119. But what I really liked about this on the candidate search is let's say you're going for insurance agent. And then let's say Charlotte, North Carolina is a big city around me. Let's say we go 500 miles out and let's say six months on the resume is okay. Uh, and we search. Got 181 right here. So what you can do right here is you can pull them up, or what I really liked about this service is as you're having things come through that you're liking or that you're pulling up, you can go right here to download, and you've got all these choices. So, for example, right here, download a spreadsheet summary of selected resumes. Click that right there. You've got the summary. You open it, and now you've got a spreadsheet of name, city, email address, phone numbers, so this is a great way to not only have access to data, but also organize the data in a way where if you're doing email marketing campaigns and such, um, that you're extracting the data out without feeling like that you're spending too much of your day on data entry. Uh, the other thing that I showed you guys today was um, it's recruiting.net. It's called Recruitum. If you're having trouble on LinkedIn getting shut out on your invitations or your searches, uh, a lot of this stuff, I don't even know what it is. Google Plus is no longer in business, but the, the bookends right here, LinkedIn and Twitter, you can use. So U.S., you're looking for insurance agent right here. Uh, you can, you know, keywords to include, keywords to exclude, find the people on LinkedIn. When you click on this, you can open in Google, and it will take you right down here, all of these. So it's another way to search. And then once again, if you are, Using Twitter, and you want to search for Twitter, United States right here, if we are searching for an insurance agent, find people on Twitter. It's going to have you open it in Google, and it's going to go right down here. So, guys, like I said, we live in the era of big data. Uh, you have an unbelievable opportunity to go out there and open so many conversations on these platforms right from your home, anywhere you are, behind the keyboard, on the phone. Take advantage. Um, build the stuff that you need to, work on your personal brand, 
And just be willing to go out there and open conversations with people because, like I said, we've got a positive message. We've got a great business opportunity. We've got free services for clients. Um, you know, there will be some people that will find fault in that message. It's going to be a very, very, very tiny fraction of a percentage of people. Most people will be very receptive of what you have to say and learn how to open, continue, and direct conversations next week. We're going to have uh, Evangelos back on, and he's going to be going through those exact things with you guys, the phrases, the language, the verbiage that we can use to open, continue, and direct conversations where you want them to go. So I will grab Alana and open this back up on the floor for any questions. If you guys need any help, by all means, let us know.